Today I want to answer the most asked question on my channel. How do I send mouse and keyboard inputs to multiple windows at once? Or how do I send an input to a minimized window? Or how can I keep using my mouse and keyboard while sending automated inputs? And the answer is, I don't know, but let's figure it out. So I'm guessing most of you want to know how to do this because you've written a bot and you want to run multiple bots at once, or you want your bot to run in the background while you still use your computer. And my initial reaction when I started getting this question was just use virtual machines. You could have multiple VMs running in the background, and those would be isolated from anything you're doing on your main desktop. But let's see why that doesn't work so well. When I play this Super Mario emulator uh, just in my browser on my normal desktop, it runs you know, pretty smoothly. But you can see when I try to play that same game in a VM, it's super laggy and not very responsive. And this is just a simple browser game. I know you can't feel this, but it's pretty unresponsive to my inputs running in this virtual machine. You know, so for your more modern, higher-end 3D games, this just isn't going to work. But for really simple games, or if you just put in a lot of work to get your VM working properly with a hardware graphics card, then maybe this would be a good solution for you. But I imagine as you start up more of these virtual machines, you know, unless you have a super powerful computer, it's probably going to be even more and more laggy. But it is technically possible. I've been testing out Pyota GUI inside of this VM. And here you'll see that I can have Pyota GUI click on the recycle bin inside of the VM while I'm using my mouse to click on the recycle bin on my actual desktop. So yeah, your automated commands inside of the virtual machine do get executed separately from what your you know, normal mouse and keyboard are doing. But you're probably not gonna be able to play your intense 3D games inside of this virtual machine, uh, so let's look for another solution. About a year ago now, as I was working on my OpenCV series, I got a tip from a viewer uh, telling me about this send message function, and he was using this to send inputs to a window in the background. So this is a Windows API function, and here he's calling it through PyWin32, and it allows you to send messages, including mouse and keyboard inputs, to a specific window. And there's a couple Stack Overflow posts about working with send message, but other than that, I really couldn't find a whole lot about working with this function. And you're not going to find a lot of documentation from PyWin32 about send message. Instead, you've got to go over to the Microsoft website and the Windows API documentation, and that's where you'll find the best documentation about send message and these other Windows API functions. I did find this one good resource on the AutoHotKey website about working with send message. And obviously this isn't in Python at all, but it does give us some more details about how to work with this. So let's try to see what we can do with it. So I'm gonna start by creating a new project, setting up a new virtual environment for it, and then installing PyWin32 into it. So looking at this sample code, the first thing we need is to get a handle on the window that we wanna send messages to, send inputs to. And I'm already a little familiar with how to do this from the OpenCV project. So for a given window name, I can grab that window handle just using win32gui.findWindow. And I've got this function here for listing out all the names of the windows I have open. And for this test, I'm just going to try to get some inputs into Notepad here. So let's list out all the window names and try to get the name of this uh, Notepad window. All right, so it looks like it's this untitled-notepad. And I know at least one person has had an issue with some extra spaces here that they didn't recognize. So let's add some quotes around these actually to make sure that this is the exact title right here. Okay, yeah, so let's use the window name untitled-notepad. All right, so now we've got a handle to our window. And in this example code, you can then use that handle to create a window from handle, which we'll then use to uh, call send message. And now we need to send some sort of input. I'll do the keyboard input first. And here we're gonna press down a key on the keyboard, we're gonna wait a fraction of a second, and then we're going to uh, release that key from the keyboard. And this right here is the VK code of the key that we're pressing. I'm not sure what key that is, so I guess we'll just find out. All right, so I didn't get that input I was expecting. So let's start debugging it. Okay, so this one was answered by Stack Overflow. This is actually the same article that I saw earlier. There's another window inside of Notepad's main one, and you need to send your messages to that inner window. Apparently there's this Microsoft Spy tool you can use to inspect that, or we can try using enum child windows. So let's do that. All right, so my plan is for the given window handle, go ahead and loop through all of those children and print them out. All right, so I can see that there's two sub windows in here, and edit is the one we're interested in. 
So I'm going to change this to get inner windows and have it return of that dictionary of all the uh, children windows. So to recap, I'm first going to get the main notepad window, and then I'm going to loop through all of the inner windows and find the edit window in that dictionary and make that our window handle. And then I'll pass that window handle over to create window from handle to get our window. And then that's what we'll use to uh, send the messages to. So this site says that OX32 should be the number two. So that's what I'm expecting when I run this. I'm hoping that two shows up like that. I couldn't get this working with send message and WM key down. Just nothing would show up in notepad. So I went searching for a solution and found a recommendation to use WM char and pass in the key value using ORD. All right, so that one worked. Here, instead of key down and key up, I'm using this window message char. And this code I pulled from this helpful Stack Overflow response. And now I want to test this code. I'm going to write A and then hit return. And then hopefully I see B then come up on a new line. And I'll clear out the notepad. All right, still having an issue here with uh, the key down and key up. Okay, two things here. First, when you start writing stuff inside a notepad, it adds a little asterisk to the title here. And so if you don't clear this out again before you run your program again, it's not gonna be able to find this window by that name. And second, it looks like using post message instead of send message uh, worked for those returns, but they ended up coming after the A and the B were both typed in. Even if I make them all post messages, it still does those returns after the uh, the characters are input. Okay, so this post is saying that send input isn't working for them with key up and key down. And so this accepted answer suggests to use the post message instead. Uh, but post message is slow, there's a, a delay to it. And so then this person replies, if you can't use post message, then you're left with send input. And I'm already pretty familiar with send input because that's what we use in PyDirect input to uh, send those inputs over. But the problem with this function in the Windows API is there's no way to specify what window to send that input to. And that's confirmed by the official documentation here. Here's another question. This user is trying to use send input to send inputs to a minimized window. And this person says you can only use send input to send input to the window handle that has keyboard focus. Here's another person saying that what we want to do isn't possible. Here's another thread talking about how to use post message with notepad. But the guy asking this question doesn't like post message and he says that keyboard event is even slower. So you could use send input instead, but of course we can't send that to a, a window in the background that's inactive. And here's more discussion of how this isn't possible and they even get a little bit cranky at this guy here. You're the 100,000th member to ask this question. So this guy has an interesting solution to the problem. You can see he's using set foreground window to actually bring notepad to the front before he inputs all that text. So maybe there's a scenario where you could jump between a bunch of different windows and individually send each one of those an input. It really just depends on your use case. And this same guy has a pretty good send message example as well. It's interesting he's using this EM replace selected instead. What language is this in? All right, so this is C++. I should have known from the uh, star there. So I guess we've hit kind of a dead end. One thing you could try is having multiple of your applications open on the screen and then just individually clicking through them, doing all of your automated inputs that way. I mean, maybe now I'm kind of thinking that that virtual machine idea, the original one, might be the best way to go. I think there's a way to use hardware graphic acceleration with those virtual machines. It'll just take some research to figure out how to set that up. And I don't know if we need an individual graphics card for each one of the VMs that we're running. You know, if we do need that, maybe uh, a few old crypto mining rigs might come in handy for that. But then it starts to become, you know, why not just run multiple computers? So I'm not sure that's really a good solution. Okay, so I at least want to get a working example for you guys of using send message or post message to play Mario in multiple windows. That way, if you want to try this out for yourself, you've got some sample code to start with. So let's see if I can do that. So I've got Mario open. And I've started this Mario script, and I'm just going to list out the window names to get the name of that window. Do I need to explain this? Probably not. All right, so I'll grab the window name. It looks like we can use the up arrow key to jump and the right arrow key to run. 
So let's just focus on getting those two things working first. There doesn't appear to be any inner windows. Okay, I got them jumping. Check this out. I've got to switch over to that window. And there it goes, jumps in the air. Yeah, so I found this stack overflow post and it mentioned that you need to set the foreground window to, uh, to you know, the Chrome tab that you actually want that input to go into in order for it to work. So I can achieve that same effect, you know, just by going over and making sure that window has the focus, but let's go ahead and use this set foreground window uh, in our code. All right, so let's get Mario over to a safe spot to test this out. Now when I run this little script, it uh, immediately opens up that window, gives it focus, and then there's that jump command. So this code here is actually the VK, the virtual key code for the letter W. And I just looked that up here on this website. So here I've just defined some variables for what those key codes are uh, for the buttons we'll use to play the game. All right, let's see if we can get Mario to run and jump over that bad guy and then jump up onto this platform. So what I'm gonna do to get this timing right, I'm going to refresh the page, then immediately press P to pause. And in our script, I'll start it by pressing P to unpause it, and then we'll do our routine. And this is a good time to clean up my code a little bit. So I think I'm gonna take these and just make them global. So I'll define them outside of the main function. And then this is our initialization step. So this right here could be its own function, but it's short enough. I think I'll just leave it in main as is for now. And then pressing down the keys for a certain amount of time, we're gonna be doing a bunch of that. So I'm gonna turn this into a function. So for press key, we'll need a window handle. We'll need to know what key we wanna press. So this will be the virtual key code. And then how long we wanna hold down that key in seconds. And when I wrote this, I'm thinking ahead to when we'll eventually have two windows to think about. Um, so that's why I've got the window handle here as a parameter. Okay, so here's how you would use press key, and I've just uh, guessed on these commands to start with. But we'll start by pressing P to unpause the game. Then we'll press D for 8 tenths of a second to uh, move over to the right. Then we'll press W to try to jump over that bad guy. Then we'll go to the right some more, and then finally try to jump up onto that platform. So we'll see how this does, and then I'll just adjust it as necessary. All right, so we're pretty early on our jumps there. We'll reset the game. Okay, so here I found a pretty interesting combination just through trial and error. And I added this sleep to the start of it after it unpauses. And you can see it runs over and it actually manages just to jump onto that first block. And the problem with our code right now is that it only allows us to press one key at a time. And you know, when we're playing Mario, a lot of times we want to jump up and still press over at the same time. And the thing I'm encouraged about is that this seems to be pretty consistent. You know, every time I run this script, it does execute the commands in about the exact same time. So that's good news for us. So how can we solve this problem with not being able to press two keys at the same time? Because right now, when we try to press like the W key, it goes into press key here. It sends that message to press down on the W key. And then it sleeps for that 0.8 seconds. And so while it's sleeping, none of our other commands can run. And then finally, at the end of that, it sends the message to go ahead and let up on the W key. So one thing we might do is we could, in press key here, uh, have these commands run inside of a thread. So the thread would start, it would immediately press down on the key that we want, and then it would sleep inside of that thread for a certain amount of time, and then finally let up on the key. And in press key, as soon as we initialize that thread and it goes off and does its own thing, it'll immediately come back to our main function and be ready to execute the next command. Or another thing we could do is we could have press key just add these commands to some sort of list, and then we could have a separate process that goes through and executes all of those commands in the list. So with that method, we'd be saying something like 0.1 seconds into the script, press the P key, and then we'd have to add up all the previous time values to figure out when exactly from the beginning of our execution of our script, when we wanna press the D key, because right now, right, this means hold down the D key for 1.9 seconds, but we'd want to do something like, hey, don't press the D key until 0.6 seconds into the execution of the script. So does that make sense? Right, we'd have a list like at one second, press down the W key, at two seconds, press down the D key, and at three seconds, release both the W key and the D key. And we'd have all those instructions in some sort of list structure, and we'd have a separate process after we've created that list to go through and execute all those actions uh, when we want them to. 
but it would be a lot of work to build our own event loop like that. So let's go and uh, switch around and see if Python already has something built for us. Okay, it looks like this Python sketch module might be doing what we want. So setting up the scheduler looks pretty easy. And then we just use this enter method to do something at some point in the future. And then when we've got our future commands all planned out, we can go ahead and call run to actually execute that event loop. Yes, yeah, so this is going to work a lot like the solution that I just talked about. You don't need to pip install anything for this. This is just a base Python library that's available to you. Okay, so I've rewritten this. We start in main by creating a scheduler. And then each press key call is just going to add a new command to that command queue. So first we're going to press the letter P. And we're going to do that zero seconds into running our script. And we're going to hold that P key for 0.1 seconds. Next, we're going to press the D key, and we're going to press down at 0.6 seconds into the execution of that command queue. And we're going to hold that key down for 1.9 seconds, and then so on for the rest of these commands. And then once we add all of these items to our command queue, we'll go ahead and run that scheduler. And I've calculated these start seconds based off of our previous commands. So when I run this, it should behave just the same as before. All right, so there Mario goes. Didn't quite make it onto that first block. All right, now I've got it working somewhat like before. But now we should be able to continue holding down this D key while we press the W key to jump up. So I'm gonna try just increasing the duration on this holding down the D key. Yeah, so now on that second jump, we're holding down both the W key and the D key, so we get that farther jump. Okay, I've adjusted those timings a little bit, just so he jumps up and he stays here on this platform. That's all I'm going to do as far as this bot script, because I think you kind of get the point. But I do want to make this work on multiple windows, so let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, I now have two Mario windows open. And as you can see, both of these windows have the same exact name, uh, so I wonder how this is going to work. They do, of course, have different ID numbers for their windows over here, so maybe we'll have to make use of that. All right, so my plan is to use this enum windows to return a list of window handles where the get window text is equal to the name of the window that I'm looking for. So this is what that looks like. I've just written a new function called find all windows. I initialize an empty list, and then I call enum windows, which is going to call this win enum handler function. So this will be called on each window that exists. And as long as that window is visible and the name of that window is the name, the window name that we're looking for, we'll go ahead and add that window handle to our result list and then return that result out of the function. So I'll call it like this to get a list of all of those window handles. I'm going to test to see if that works just by checking on the second result that we get from find all windows. We're trying to run our script as we have been. All right, so it looks like it still works for at least one window. Let's see if it works also for the other window in that result. And yep, that looks good too. And now the last hurdle we have is that whatever window we're sending an input to, that window has to be our foreground window. So as our scheduler is running, every time we run one of these send message commands, we need to make sure that the correct window does have focus. Let's real quick write that loop first to go through all of our windows. I think I'm going to try it first this way, where each window handle has its own scheduler. And I think I'm still going to start my script. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to find all of those windows with this name. It'll bring all of those to the front. Then we'll go ahead and pause for a second before it goes and creates those schedules. And then in our press key function, we've got to go ahead and add all of those set foreground windows calls just to make sure we have the correct foreground window before we execute a send message. And I'm not sure how long set foreground window is going to take but we want each one of those to fire just a fraction of a second before we call send message. So I'm going to start off with one one hundredth of a second and see if we can get away with that. So we'll take the start seconds for this particular key press, we'll subtract that 0.01 seconds, and that'll be when we call set foreground window. And then same thing for the key up, we'll go ahead and call set foreground window again, uh, just that fraction of a second before we're due to call the, the send message. And the only issue I see with this is if start seconds is zero, zero minus something is going to be a negative number. And I think that might cause issues with our scheduler. Uh, so I'm going to deal with that just by making sure that this first key press 
the uh, P key doesn't happen exactly at zero seconds. All right, so let's give this a go. Okay, that's interesting. So it did the, uh, the first window in its entirety first, and then it went over and did the second window and ran the script there. And that's because again, I keep forgetting this run command is, is blocking. So when we go through this loop here, it'll schedule all of these events and then it'll call run and we're stuck there. No more code is being executed until this run completes. And when it does complete, it'll go back through the loop and do it again. Of course, that time for the second window. So I guess we do need to do this uh, all in the same scheduler or otherwise call run in a thread. But again, I'm just in the mood to ignore threads today. All right, so let's just try it this way first and see what kind of chaos it causes. I'm thinking it might work better if we add a little bit of delay in between executing the calls on each window. But we'll try it this way first. Oh uh, yeah, so that was a bit of a mess. Okay, so I've created this offset seconds variable. And each time through this loop, when we're creating those commands for our queue, I'm going to increase that by 0.2 seconds so that the commands for the second window will happen 0.2 seconds after the commands happen for the first window. All right, that seemed to work great. Almost. This guy didn't quite end up where he was supposed to. Remember, we've also got this foreground time to worry about, and that's you know how much time we give set foreground window to work before we call send message. So I'm going to increase that one a little bit. Okay, the second window ended up in the right spot, and the first window is still not quite. I think uh, we've got some sort of conflict here. Maybe it'll help to organize my windows like this so we can see both happening at the same time. Hey, it worked that time. You can see they didn't end up in quite the exact pixel location. I think I'm going to increase this set foreground window time just a little bit more. All right, that was pretty good. Still, you can see our two characters didn't end up in exactly the same pixel location. And that's probably gonna cause a pretty big ripple effect as we try to scale this up. And when I run it a second time. Yeah, you can see each window is just a little bit offset from where it ended up the last time. So it's just like, it's not super repeatable every time that we get the same results. All right, let's see if we can scale this up to four games just for fun. Okay, it looks like we got two that kind of got inputs and the uh, the other two windows kind of got ignored. All right, well, I guess that's my experience with trying to use send message to, uh, to bot in four different windows. You know, I'm sure we could fine tune this a bunch, but it's certainly not easy to work with. It was bugging me that we still didn't have an answer to the question of how to send inputs to a minimized or unfocused window. So I tried using post message, but that still didn't work when Chrome was minimized. Same with Edge, that browser behaves just like Chrome for me. So then I tried Firefox, and that actually works with send message, even when it's minimized. It doesn't work if you leave the address bar focused, and I couldn't get it to work with multiple tabs or multiple windows, but at least it's some glimmer of hope. It also doesn't seem to be as responsive when playing Mario as Chrome was. The results of my bot script were more inconsistent. But this shows that it really depends on what program you're interacting with, whether or not you're going to find any success with send message. So if you've got a project in mind, it's probably worth trying this out just to see what kind of results you can get. Alright guys, so I'll put this code up on GitHub if you're interested in playing around with it. But in the end, it just seems like we have a little bit of an operating system problem. You know, Windows just isn't really designed to allow a user to give simultaneous inputs to multiple windows. 
So we can try to co-opt the send message and post message APIs to try to do that, but these weren't really designed for time-sensitive inputs, and having to quickly switch between multiple windows isn't ideal. Or you could try to get around this by setting up multiple virtual machines, and the main issue with that is the performance that we get using VMs, and at a certain point it just even makes more sense to just use multiple computers. But yeah, that's what I've been able to figure out about sending inputs to multiple windows or minimized windows. And if you find a better way to do this, definitely let me know, either here in the comments or drop by my Discord. But I guess it is what it is, and everyone's trying to figure this one out for a reason. There just doesn't seem to be a good solution for it. But hey, thanks for exploring with me today anyways, and I'll see you next time.